Welcome to the big board. Look what landed at my door tonight. If you have been on Facebook, Google Plus, Instagram, Twitter, the blog, and now YouTube, you will have seen this box just arrived. Literally this evening, I've been out at a uh, work function, had a few cocktails. What better way to wrap up the night than open the monster box? I'm not going to play it for you tonight. I'm not going to do uh, anything other than ogle and fondle the pieces of the game that's called Old School Tactical. And for some reason, people have a problem with it being called Old School Tactical. Clearly, those people either A, don't understand real war games, B, don't understand what old school means, or C, play too many Euro games. That's all I'm going to say. All I know is... They were right in regards to the size of the box and the weight of the box. That's all I know. Now, a lot of, uh, a lot of fuss is made. By the way, <clears throat> like all my unboxings, I make it up as I go along. Uh, a lot of fuss has been made about this being a Mark Walker game, but please pay attention to the uh, design. Shane Logan. I think this is <laughs> rich, really is freaking heavy. Uh, this is a, come on. This is a first design for Shane, is my understanding. It's a funky choice of artwork for the box. We have a nice muted logo on the corner here. And one thing, if you'll note, on the other side here is that that's the full color logo, right? So rather than spoil the initial impression of this <coughs> T34, 75 millimeter, maybe it looks like 75 millimeter uh, gun uh, T34, rank, cranking through the snow, which is what? Evocative of classic World War II combat, classic old school combat, classic fast action, desperate times, dice rolling, killing squads, blowing tanks, popping torrent, war gaming. That's what old school means. Now, old school as a design philosophy is one thing and as a metaphor is another and as a graphical interpretation is another yet again. <clears throat> and that is where I think the, 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 uh, the dichotomy occurs. Because what I think from what I've seen of other uh, pictures and what I've seen from uh, when I played this on Vassal the one time uh, is that um, I, uh, I believe where this game is different is in its components. And that's what we're gonna focus on right now. So let's pull this Mark Walker game from Flying Pigs box lid up. And we're gonna try and go through as much of the components as we can. Here's the rule book, <clears throat> and that is a, uh, it feels like, let me just see here. Yep, okay. Because everything is so, so long and thick, it feels like this, uh, this uh, rule book is uh, the wrong scale, but it's not. It's a standard uh, American size page. It has a index here on the contents page on the left-hand side. Full color. And I've only played the one time and I don't really recall very much about it. All I know is that the uh, Russians had a hard time attacking the Germans. So we're gonna flick through the rule book very quickly. I've had a couple of friends say that this feels like a great introductory, high quality introductory World War II tactical war game. And that probably says it all for me right there. And as I'm skimming these rules, I am not seeing a lot of things that are, you know, dense and heavy. There's lots of bullet points here 
that are numbered and there are uh, color codings going on here as well and we have uh, cards and things in this game as well that we'll talk about in a little bit if I can remember what I'm supposed to uh, say about them because it's been a while since I've played. So a nice rule book, clocks in at a whopping 21 pages, hardly based on formatting this would be a 12 or 15 page rule book without the pictures and all, and, and all the large font stuff and all that sort of good business, right? So there's that. So you get a rule book, congratulations. You get a set of cards, and these, these are, if I recall correctly, luck cards. I'm sure right now, uh, or fake cards or whatever you like to call them, Mark is cringing in uh, horror as I do this unboxing and destroy the impressions of his game. But here we have it. Here are the different cards that you can earn. Interdiction, water attack, with the firepower of four in the landing hex and two in adjacents. No quarter dice rolls, so you can uh, you can pretty quickly get a feel for this, right? So they're the they're what I would call the, the luck cards, and let me see if they are. So there's luck cards, and then there are uh, side specifics. I think. Let's see, maybe not here. Okay. The, uh, sorry, this is a this is a unit card. Okay, so there's your luck cards, and then you have <clears throat> all the details of each of the individual unit types. On cards that you can just oops lay out like so pioneer squads flak different types of flak AT guns and here's what I like about this right we're getting into some fairly granular detail even at a relatively simple level I like it right different vehicle types Three J's, four E's, Stokes, Panthers, more Stokes, Martyrs, Troop Carriers, half tracky things, Leaders, Heavy MGs. So you can see, look at those guys, that looks nice, doesn't it? NKVD, Guards, Rifles, Sappers, Shock, Irregulars. I guess that's another word for militia. Uh, or maybe it's not. Maybe it just means irregular. Maybe they are all constipated. Okay, T-34, KV-1, KV-2, Matildas, BT-7s, T-26, T-28, T-34 standard, 1940 version, 1941 version. There was an 80, 80 something millimeter version back here. Was that what that was? Yeah, 85. Uh, then snipers, MGs, ATs, all, all the things you could possibly want in a good little war game, right? Reminds me a little bit of Panzer there, but hopefully it's a lot more consumable. Okay, okay. so let's put all the stuff to one side. Got that. Got this. Got a keyboard that's in the way. Scenarios. Can you guys see that okay? East front, 41, 42. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I guess I turn it this way for the Brandenburgers, August 5th, 1941. Force outline, map coordinates, where it fits on the map that you're going to play, special rules, offboard assets, virtual conditions, and away we go. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 18, 20, 22, 24, 26 scenarios. And some of these get quite big, as you can see here, right? 26 scenarios. Some are small, there's a larger one there as well. That's a lot, that's a lot of gameplay in one box. Okay, so we got that. Combat results table. 
two combat results tables. Oh, gee. I know a company that could take a lesson from these folks. Two CRTs, very nice. And on the back, we have how to handle artillery, how to handle terrain, the turn sequence, airstrikes, bogging, getting bogged down, rallying, and modifiers. Very nice, clean, crisp, and easy to read. Well laid out. Oh, here's one thing I want to check. Yeah, okay. We'll talk about that, that about the about some other time. <clears throat> Info counters. These counters are large, thick. I'm trying to zoom in here for you. Come on, dude. Make it so grasshopper. Look at that bad boy. There you go. These are nice thick counters. They're all set correctly. They're beautiful. Let's pop out one so you can have a look. Look at that. I know that's not focused, but there you go. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, these are even nicer than uh, I had anticipated. All right, so there are those. Control counters, pivots, you can be shaken, you can be stirred, airstrikes, broken, etc. Russian infantry units, let me zoom out for you, sorry about that. Captains, lieutenants, sergeants, snipers, various rifle squads and shot caliber units, guard units, the obligatory uh, Light red, dark red for distinguishing between NKVD and uh, guards. Various uh, tank vehicles, which I think is a pretty decent uh, whack at those guys. Uh, wrecks on the back of those bad boys, and then uh, various states of uh, cohesiveness there. German forces, we have SS formations in the classic black, of course. Lieutenants and Sarges and Pioneers and Crews and Flak and more tanks. The artwork is a little different from, uh, it's not a, a, it's a richly detailed piece of artwork, but it's not trying to take over the counter, right? You're not distracted by it. You can see combat fire values and you can see movement and range and all that sort of business on there. You're not distracted by the artwork, but you can appreciate, there it is. Oh, look, there's a silhouette of, silhouette of a panzer, X, Y, Z, whatever it may be, right? Nice. Another counter sheet. <clears throat> More guys. All right, anything fun in there? Are there anything exciting? Yeah, some stubs and bits and pieces, okay. All right, now, let me see if I can uh, do this. Here is the, the winter map, and I'm not sure, wow, wow, this is even bigger, actually much bigger than, oh my goodness, than I imagined. <laughs> Check this bad boy out. Check this bad boy out. I don't care who you are, I don't care what you like. Just appreciate the aesthetics, okay? Be an ASL bigot and go, Ooh, it doesn't have 4,000 pages of rules. Just love it, just love on this, okay? Look at that, look at that. I've got it upside down, I know, relax. Beautiful, just, I'm gonna try and scoot over the map a little bit. Muddy tracks and roads, forest. Look at that. Doesn't that look cool? Great artwork. It's just beautiful. Just beautiful. 
And here is where I will agree with other reviewers or pundits and suggest to you that there's nothing old school about this. The mounting <coughs> is uh, very solid. Let me see if I can show the back to you. You know, it's really well done on the back here. It's got a nice texture to it as well. It's a thick, strong uh, format. I don't believe this is going to warp or buckle. I think you can probably fold this up into one or two sections and play with that bad boy. Summer man. I'm gonna try not to break the board. Here is your summer version of that same map. I'm sorry, it's not the similar version of the same map. It's a different map. But there you go. Just fantastic details. Lovely, big playing surface. Very, very cool. I love it. Well done, Flying Pigs. That is the unboxing.